Hello, fellow travelers, and welcome to the Traverse of the Stars podcast. How are my loyal listeners? Thank you for your continued support. As always, hit that subscribe button, everybody. We have an amazing show for you because this is part two of the epic interview with David Hewlett. We discuss his upcoming projects, The Swearing Jar and The Cabinet of Curiosities. Now come join me as we go traversing the stars. In The Swearing Jar, because you talk about that you're doing yeah. it with your sister and you said your your wife is doing it as, yeah, as so, well so my wife my wife was the producer and she saw this play that kate wrote my sister kate who played G- genie in, in stargate um and uh she saw this play she just loved it absolutely loved it and she was looking for sort of the a film to be her first sort of foray into into um producing on her own like a, her own independent producing thing and so she said, I, I want to make this movie. And I was like, well, don't work with Kate. I mean, don't work with family. It's a disaster, especially Kate. Um, and uh, so I tried to talk her out of it. As I tried to talk my sister, I also tried to talk, talk Kate out of theater school, by the way. I also, I, and I, I think I tried to talk her out of, did I talk her out of writing? I think I, no, I didn't talk her out of writing. I said, she should write. She should stop acting and start writing. Mm-hmm. Um, she does write. I don't know if that's because of me, um, but, but uh, yeah, the, yeah, she just literally, Kate has not taken my suggestion at all and it's good on her because she's like she made the right decision every time mm. but so this film came up um and she'd written a script for it and she'd had a hard time trying to get it made and 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 um uh and then jane was like no i, I want to make this is this is it this is the kind of movie i want to make and um you know it's this weird kind of mix of like musical and romance and comedy and drama and it's just this wonderful it's it's classic kate it's it's incredibly sort of you know all over the place um and just like it's like that kate's got just so much bloody talent you can't you know it's like oh it's done enough she's written a script she's got to write freaking music in it as well and like <laughs> do really funny lyrics and anyway so she's got so it's a great combination of that um and then of course we brought in we brought in uh, tim williams who's uh, not we but she uh, uh, jane i say we because I, I, I apparently the company's both of ours and I, but I just, I'd stay out of it. I keep saying, you should do more YouTube. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. Um, but uh, so, you know, Tim Williams came in and, and, um, and, and wrote this beautiful soundtrack. Um, uh, Ali Clemens, um, uh, uh, Patrick, uh, I forgot his second, his second name now from, um, uh, from Suits, uh, Kathleen Turner. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> oh my God, that voice. I can't get out. The voice is amazing. Um, you know, so she put together this amazing thing. And then, of course, it's the middle of pandemic. So she's trying to make a movie in the middle of a pandemic. So she's just, she did not make it easy for herself, but she, but she got this thing made. It's really beautiful. Um, I, I, um, I, there's a, a tiny role that I tried to talk them out of making me do. Cause I, the, the, the truth is, I, I will do anything to get out of working. Like I, and I, and I, and I get talked into it and I always enjoy it. And I always go, oh my God, why didn't I want to do that? I never actually want to do it. I think it's like an anxiety thing or something, but, or, or like a fear of commitment. But um, anyway, so, so I just did this, I do this tiny, tiny little part in it. Um, and, uh, and the, I was actually joking that my whole first scene, I think I'm out of focus in the background, <laughs> you know, um, cause I had, cause I insisted on wearing this horrendous wig, which they then, they then, they then decided was way too over the top. Um, anyway, so I was causing chaos. I was doing my best to ruin my sister's film. Um, you know, uh, but, my siblings do. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. But, but, you know, Kate did a beautiful job on the script. Uh, but I just couldn't get over about how much work was involved for Jane. I mean, Jane is. Jane is involved in every single aspect of that film. I mean, has had to make these horrible, you know, Sophie's choice decisions on so many different aspects of it. I'm amazed. I am amazed. A, that the movie even got made, but that it's just this, it's, I mean, it's just this beautiful, this is really beautiful, uh, like funny, this, these incredibly catchy songs in it. It's just, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that I could be a tiny, tiny, I really am a tiny, tiny, tiny part of it. But I, but I feel like a bit like a mascot. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm like sort of there. I should really just be in some funny looking suit. But um, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it really is a, a testament to, uh, to to 
the well to Jane getting it done. And of course, you know, Kate writing this beautiful, odd little, I think it was originally like a fringe play, you yeah. know? So, um, so when, when you, um, in your role in the movie, your, your bill, um, do you get do you get to sing in it? Is there a musical part for no, you? No, no, you can't. They won't let me anywhere near singing. I tried to sing to my son. I went in the other morning. He wanted me to wake him up at nine thirty. I came in with a guitar and tried because Kate sort of inspired me somewhat to sort of. I, yeah. I've had this guitar. I got given this guitar years ago, and um, I never played it. I just sort of, I would look at it. I walk into the room and look at it and go like, God, curse you, guitar! Why can't you play yourself? Um, and uh, but uh, during the pandemic, I I picked it up and I found it incredibly. And just incredibly relaxing. And of course, I, you know, I, I also, you know, Jason Momoa is a very talented guitarist now. Well, I'll tell you why, because I had to listen to him freaking practice for five years on Stargate, you know, which is just, you know, I got, I, I like, I feel like I never wanted to hear a guitar again ever, but um, no, no. So yeah, singing is not in the, not, was not in the books. I literally, I mean, I am, I am a glorified uh, background performer in it. Um, you know, the perform the, the, but the performances are just beautiful. I mean, I gotta say one of my favorite performances in it is Kathleen Turner because yeah. she's so funny. Like she's just, I mean, both in life and in this film, I just, she's just, I mean, she's both terrifying and lovely. She's got, she plays this, the, 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 uh, the mother-in-law and, uh, but she's just heartbreaking. Like she does this, she's at one moment, you're just like, Oh, what a, you know, and then, and then, uh, and then the next, she just, she'll say something and just tear your heart out. It's just, mm. it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. And then, yeah, I mean, no. So I mean, I really, I should, I, I could take no, I literally did everything I possibly could for the, to make this film not happen. <laughs> like literally anything, anything I could possibly do. I really thought it was a terrible idea. And once again, I was ignored and, and, and I've, I've been proven wrong yet again. So <laughs> no, you should definitely, I absolutely, I, you really should get, um, I mean, you could even do them uh, together or separately, but you should talk to talk to Kate because it would be fun to listen, I think, to get her perspective on how it progressed, because it is I don't think people realize just how much work it is getting a film made, even just a, you know, a little, you know, I don't, I don't know what the budget was eventually, but, you know, it's like chicken feed compared to to like an Avengers movie or something. Mm. And the less money you have, the harder it is to make it, um, <laughs> you know, and it's. I mean, independent films were everything when I grew up and now it's very, very difficult. It's, they almost don't exist anymore, you know? Um, well, I'm going to say, I mean, you, you have my email. I would more than happy to talk to you, both your sister yeah, and, and your I'll wife. Put, I'll, about I'll put the you project. in touch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, mean, that, that'd be, I mean, that'd be absolutely awesome. Um, also, just even just for people to understand what a producer does, because that's, I, you know, <laughs> as it turns out, it's everything. Like right, literally, right, right. literally cleaning toilets at times when necessary. I mean, it's just, it's extraordinary. And also, and then Kate's journey as well is, I think, fascinating and inspiring for people as well, because I think it's a, you know, I mean, she's, she's done, I think she originally trained as a teacher as well. I should talk to her sometime. <laughs> yeah, you probably should talk to your sister yeah. once in a while. She, she, she check in with her once in a while. Apparently she had a kid. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> congratulations. Uncle. Yeah. Georgina, cute kid. Oh my God. She's like a Gerber baby. It's like ridiculous. <laughs> you know, I can't make the kid laugh though. So I'm, oh. she's, out of, she's out of my will. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how rough is it to work with family like that? I mean, was there issues of like your, your wife and your sister? I mean, there's a fight between the two of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I ain't winning set. that one. I ain't winning. <laughs> the only loser is right here. Right, um, right. Yeah. I mean, but again, the nature of any, of these things. Making a film is, I think um, it's, I mean, it's sometimes it's a bit like working in office. I mean, you just, you're going to have, you're going to have your heads are going to bang together every so often. And, and, uh, and that definitely happened on this. I mean, it's very, it's also really hard to know again, if you've got someone, you know, the weird thing is like you write something and then you have to just give it to someone else. Like, you know what I mean? Like you right, just right. don't have any, you have no power after that. I was always amazed. I thought if you wrote it, look, I've written and directed, and still being amazed at the fact that you just don't get to make any decisions. I mean, at, until you're at a certain level of, right, right, you know, right. um, or maybe unless you're a certain personality type. I mean, I always thought that being an actor would be a wonderful, um, you know, would be a wonderful experience to have toward, towards directing. Hmm. I think it's, for me, it's the absolute opposite of that. It's the worst thing because I am so used to trying to keep everybody happy as an actor. You just want to, you know, like I just, I just want to keep things going, and right. you know, like dance, monkey dance. You know, <laughs> Come on, everybody! You know, like, but as a director, you can't do that. You have to have very clear vision. You have to have, you have to, 
you know, you have to piss people off and I'm just not good at that. I just don't, mm. you know, I, you know, I get pissed off, but I'm not, I'm not good at just saying like, nope, I want this. You know, it's always like, really? Well, if you think that's a good idea, maybe it's a good idea. We should talk about that. Should we do that? You know, like it's, I'm, it's, it's a very, very different um, art, but the idea of handing a script over to someone else and saying like, okay, that's my baby. You go, you know, it's right, right. really difficult. So of course there's going to be, there's going to be stuff there. And there definitely was where, you know, where, you know, Jane had to say like, you know, look, here's the deal. This, I couldn't do this because it's, a, you know, these, these things had to happen in order to make this happen. And, you know, um, you know, and vice versa, I'm sure. So um, yeah, it was fascinating. I mean, and then, and then, you know, then you get the director in there as well. Lindsay was the, was the director who's just, you know, wonderful. Um, did a beautiful little film called uh, Wet Bum, which is just, a, it's just a lovely little film, like just, yeah about sort of bullying and being being a, a young woman in a certain a certain time it's just yeah um again these little films that i mean she's got this the the, the um you know the her her tagline for want of a better word for her for her company is movies by women for women who give a fuck <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> and i just love that because i think that just sums up jane so well mm. you know what i mean like she 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 cares like she really and she loves films, like loves them, loves them in a way that I thought I used to. I don't, I, now I love the internet, but I, I'm not, you know, I, I think I love technology more than I love mm. the, 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 I mean, I, I, I mean, I love a good film, of course, or a good television show, but, but I, I feel like my love of film, a, a big part of it is because there's so much technology in it. Mm. You know what I mean? I love that aspect of film and television. So, I mean, do you consider doing more tech for films, like d doing some of the special effect things or whatever? You, something I'd love considered? to. Yeah, I'd love to. I did a little bit, uh, m tiny, tiny little things on another film that, that um, hey, another film that Jane bullied me into. <laughs> um, yeah, All About Who You Know, which is really fun, which is this yeah. kind of uh, uh, playing this Aaron Sorkin type of disaster who, you know, who's trying to, you, you sort of try to pull his family together and, and while yeah, yeah it's it's a it's kind of it's a fun it's it's an anti-romance romance if that makes sense it's almost like a it's very sort of meta it's almost like a it's like a romance film talking about writing a romance film if that makes sense mm. like a so there's sort of there's meat cutes and all sorts of stuff like that but it's all done very sort of weirdly self-consciously it's kind of a fun it's a fun little film but yeah. that they needed some, they did some, just some weather effects and some compositing stuff, very simple compositing stuff that wasn't meant to be like wipes and things just to help, you know, to help sell a cut and stuff. Right, right. And um, like an idiot, I went like, oh, I'll do that, you know, <laughs> and then spent a very long time I, because it's, I'm so obsessive, but I would love to do more of it. There's another film, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it or not, but there's a, there's a film um that i'm a, a part of that i'm really i hope it is going to go in september and i get to one of the reasons why i'm so excited about it is i just i get to be there for all the effects stuff nice. like i get to and and the guy who's directing it is a is an effects um uh lamentis company does 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 effects and i just i mean that the technology is extraordinary i mean do you know do you know the company red giant i'm they i don't think they so. do I'm plugins not. for adobe uh after effects they do all these amazing oh, okay I, I, unfortunately, I'm, I'm a much of them a nerd. I'm, I'm unfortunately not much of a tech nerd. Unfortunately. Oh, really? Do you? But do you do editing at all? Do you? Any, are you doing any? Oh, well, I edit this on. Um, uh, I think it's Jeez. something Filmora. Um, I, I oh, you use Filmora. Yeah, yeah, Filmora. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, so so the, it's basically just a plug-in for both an editing software and you know, uh, and a and a um, uh, what do they call it? 2D effects or whatever. So you, hmm. it started off with sort of titles and stuff, but then it's got more and more advanced and that could do 3D stuff and everything, but they would do these short films. And I actually, I suggest everyone go and look at them because they're amazing. Some of the best short films I've ever seen done by a company called Red Giant. Um, and uh, they were just promotional films for their effects. But the geniuses behind the company who made these films they made these, they just, again, they love films. There's extraordinary stuff they were doing. And I literally tweeted them at one point and said, I will, I will act for, I will act for software. And they took me up on it. They sent me the software. They sent me a software subscription. And I went, I went and filmed a couple of their things for them. Um, oh, that's awesome. And it was done. I've sort of struck up a great friendship with Aaron there. Who's, I don't think Aaron's there anymore, but, but, um, but yeah. Um, and Seth Worley, who is, I think, just a genius director. One of my favorite films that they did was one called, um, Oh, uh, I'm gonna have to look it up because it's um, 
it really is worth seeing. I think you'd love it. It's 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 incredibly smart. Uh, <laughs> let me see if I can look it up. Right. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves while I look that up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries. <laughs> but that is awesome, though. Like, are you are this CGI work that you're doing, like on the computer? Or are you built or are you able to build like the? Um, you say you're into robotics. Oh, I love the robotics too. Yeah, that's that's the problem. Is it's the it's the what is it the uh, the jack of all trades, master of none. Oh yeah. That's my. I'm I'm fascinated by everything the problem is i want to play with everything so you know. now is this like robot war type robots uh, it's funny that's the the um uh it, it's it's the first thing that people go to with with um uh with robots is that when you want to they go like you want to teach kids robots let's have them fight each other the problem is there's a there's kind of an innate issue there i find um uh you know i i'm always looking for other ways because i want them to fight Frankly, that's what I like. I'm like, I'm all Pacific Rim on this stuff. Like I, right, you right, know, right. Transformers, the crap out of it. I, I want them to fight. Robot Wars, one of my favorite shows. But, you know, from an educational, inspirational standpoint, you kind of want them not destroying each other. So I try to look for other ways of, of doing that. Um, mm. One of the ones I played with that um, we ended up doing a little video of uh, for a, 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 a company here up in, in Toronto. Um, we took the robots and we... We, we took this Google AI software and we taught it to recognize different fart sounds. <laughs> That's cool. And then so you could, depending on how you farted, um, would control where the robot went. <laughs> and that's the kind of, that's the sort of kind of stuff that I, that I try to play with because I feel like, you know, appeal to the, if I can appeal to the child and myself, I feel that they might appeal to the, to the kids as well. I mean, this is sometimes a few groans and, you know, bad dad jokes and things, but, but yeah, that's, uh, it's more about just trying to, I just, I just, I, I think robots are incredible. I think what I forget, and, and I think we forget, is that the kids grew up with these things. Mm. There's no big deal. They've had toy robots. There's no, you know what I mean? Like, these may be magic to me, but to them, it's like, yeah, whatever. Great. Yeah, it's a robot, whatever. It's a remote <laughs> control. It doesn't matter. So it's kind of just trying to come up with different ways of them to use it. Like, mm. like a brain computer interfaces. Like, you know, can you use your brain to control the computer? I mean, um, you know, uh, we looked into building a lie detector test because I was doing, I was working on this Guillermo movie and I was doing, I was running this old school um, lie detector test uh, uh, on Bradley Cooper of all people. Um, so there you are, I'm, you know, electroding up Bradley Cooper and chatting on about how this thing works. And then I thought, and then I mentioned it to the kids and they're like, oh, let's make one of those. So looking into little Arduinos on how you could, or, or Raspberry Pis or whatever that you could use to make your own little, oh, little that's cool. Uh, yeah, that, that's the kind of stuff I, I love. And I, I, you know, I lose the kids a lot of the time because I'll just go down the rabbit hole with it. But at least I feel like <laughs> I feel like it almost doesn't matter. It's just about letting them know that it's possible to do these things and then they can run yeah. with it if they want to. If they don't, they don't, you know, so. That's that's awesome. I mean, so you very much are um, a teacher right now. I mean, that's pretty much what you're doing. Is this something you're doing? Is like after school or is it like a class you're doing during the school day? Well, it's it's funny. It's I, I mean, I originally I used to just go into the school. I had like a big orange rover, as I called it, this giant cart. And I'd throw my 3D printers in the back and a bunch of robots and I would just wheel it into school and we'd take apart old, you know, anything. The kids would just bring stuff in and we'd, you know, if it was a Furby or a, or a vacuum cleaner or a radio, lots of printers. Printers are great because they're just, they're, they're sort of fun to rip apart. And there's all sorts of little, mm. little motors and pumps and things, and lights and LEDs. And so that was the, the, the original idea was just to take stuff apart. Um, you know, we had a, I had a kid show up on my doorstep. Uh, when we were building a PC and saying, you know, your your son, your son lied. He said you were building a, P, a, a computer. And I was like, yeah, no, we're building a we're building a gaming computer. He goes, what? How do you do that? And I was like, well, come on down. <laughs> so he came down and started playing with it. And now, now he's the kid I go to to ask what to get when I'm looking for <laughs> computer stuff because he just he loves it. Like he mm. absolutely loves it. He just didn't know it was possible. I just thought, and again, unless you know to look that stuff up, you don't look it up, right? So right. right. You know, and especially if you're at school and it's like, you know, you're learning how to use Word from the 1990s, you know, yeah. computers are boring, right? I mean, so so that's that was kind of the inspiration for it was I was worried that the kids had this sort of black box mentality to stuff where it's like, oh, the Xbox is broken. You throw it out. I was like, no, you don't. You pull it apart. You take out all the cool <laughs> stuff. There's lasers in there. Um, you know, so it's just that it's that was that kind of approach to it that I that I I just found was very successful. And then, you know, whenever you talk about a film with the kids, you know, they often that for some reason that that that's still somewhat interesting to them, even more so if it's a YouTuber, right? So <laughs> I do I go out of my way to befriend as many of these YouTubers as I possibly can <laughs> any way I can just because that's like my in with some of the kids. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, so it's, it's an incredibly long winded way of saying 
uh, we basically we stream Tuesday. I try to stream every Tuesday at at two thirty ish, depending on how good I am at arriving on time. Um, and we come up with a bunch of I, a bunch of topics that I'll bring in. Some of them hit, some of them miss, but it's more about, and the kids will dual screen. So they're playing video games at the same time. I stop, try to stop that. I go, great, you do it. Because what happens is if they're playing video games, you know you've hit on something that's interesting when they stop and go, what, what's that? What, <laughs> what you know what I mean? Right, so right. I feel like, I feel like there's no point in fighting it. I mean, so, so that's, and, and that only came about because of the pandemic. Originally, I had them coming to the house, but there was a teacher strike. There was a teacher strike, so the schools wouldn't let us do it at school. So I said, okay, fine. So they can come over to our house. So poor Jane had like 15 kids running around screaming in the basement, <laughs> eating fields of pizza down here and, and, oh. and, and uh, you know, looking at gross stuff under the microscope. Um, you know, like that's that we just, it's, it's really very free. It's very much like me, very ADHD. But I, I found that 2.30 is a good time to start because there's some kids who, it's like this one kid who I think is in New Brunswick. So he's an hour, hour ahead anyways. There's a bunch of kids. There's a couple of kids in, in London, England and, and uh, Sweden and uh, a whole bunch of uh, all mm. over America and stuff. And sometimes it's one kid. Sometimes it's just vibe pup. This one kid who's there every single week. And then there's other times there's it's it's 15. Who knows? I mean, you just never know. And but what I love about it is that you've got the chat going on the side. So anything you want to talk about, there is someone there is some stargate adjacent nerd <laughs> who knows about the topic and you can go oh really like i mean we had a friend who just came up who was a friend i met online and he's a he's a um he's an ex-navy uh nuclear sub guy like okay. he knows <laughs> he used to run the nuclear subs then he went to the nsa so he's there was a lot about hacking and computer um uh, uh you know security stuff um and now he works at intel so there's like i mean it's just and then ran a podcast for a while I mean, it's just it's Stargate has allowed me to connect with people that I never would have been able to connect with otherwise. And I just, I think mm. for me in a weird way, it wasn't, it wasn't even the job. It was just the, the, this, this wonderful sort of uh, entry pass. It gave me to, to this, to this world of, of knowledge that I just would not have been able to I just wouldn't, I wouldn't even know where to knock. You know what I mean? <laughs> so. So the thing with, with computers and, and robotics and like that, it's moving so rapidly. Mm. How do you keep up with the speed in which things are moving in that field? Well, I mean, that's the funny thing is I, I, I'm, I'm not able to. I mean, I think, and I think it's one of the things we talk about with the kids is that there's, there's so much information. Like if you, it's, I feel like every week, it's a bit like putting your lips up to the fire hose to find out what you want to talk about with them because there's so much stuff. Um, so I just try to grab stuff that I, that, that, that I think is, that can that is immediately either exciting or uh, you know right away whether you've got them or not hmm. you say it and you're like they'll either go like really and there'll be questions or they're like uh-huh and you're like okay next <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> like i just don't i stop taking it personally at all um you know uh so uh i've completely forgotten the question now gone completely oh, uh, <laughs> the, word, the, word. The, 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 the speed in which technology moves oh yeah so yeah so i'm not even looking try i'm not even looking to keep up i'm just I'm just trying to find things that 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 I think will catch their eye or that can be sort of twisted into something that might be useful to them. Like I'm really pushing right now for biotech and analytics because I think mm. those are two fields that would be very useful to them if they have an interest in it. Um, and and also the idea that you've got these sort of pillars of education, which really irritate me because because the skills that people are looking for now have got them all shoved together. Mm. The idea of being able to jump between things and go like taking the art from science and the science from art and the literature from, you know, you know, literature and geography and, 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 you know, there's just so many different mixings of these things mm. um, that I feel like if you're too specific the, you know, a computer will be doing that in no time at all. Right. <laughs> I mean, you sort of want to be as human as possible. So I'm just looking for things. I, I don't, I don't really try to be cutting edge. I tend to be because I find it I, that generally is what I find fascinating. Mm. I'm just looking for things that I think will be helpful for them it, to inspire them potentially into things that they might not have thought about doing before, or that things might be interesting that weren't before. You know what I mean? Why talk about dinosaurs when you can talk about, uh, you know, dinosaur assholes, like there's, <laughs> when there's, there's literally, there was like, they found fossilized butts. You know what I mean? And the kids, of course, are right away. They're like, wait a second. What does a fossilized butt look like? You know what I mean? It's just that kind of stuff. It's so childish, but I never grew up anyways. I mean, so. That's I, what works you know, though. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> actors are children. I mean, you know, so, and I think, I think, and I think teachers are as well. Yes. Yes. I will tell you right now, the, 
my the, the amount of immaturity my, my students know i'm a comic book geek they know i'm, I'm a nerd and they know right. you know my references are gonna be stupid and nerdy right. and it's it, whatever be a kid it works be, you know don't get a stick up your ass that, then you're well, done. and learn from them i mean that's the right. thing is i like that's the thing is you're much more useful to them in some cases when you're just listening yeah you know what i mean like what i mean i love getting their opinion on stuff i mean some of it's you know wildly terrifying but but you know i'm sure in your situation i mean if you're dealing with kids who've probably had you know more life experience than i've ever had um you know that's got to be tough too but again it's the you're not as long as you're not pretending to be better than them i mean you right. know what i mean like i feel like i feel like it's like what do you got <laughs> you know what i mean like tell me i want to know like that's you right. know, addiction really what was it what's what's the you know how does that work what's the how do you fight that what do you like how do you stop that what's the you know like i i i'm i, I find that that stuff fascinating i mean you know um like i say i really do think it is that that's the pill that's the pill we all want to take if we can get people educated and talking i'm not saying educated specifically in any one way of thinking mm. because i think the whole point is you just want to educate them enough to make their own mind up about stuff yeah. well i would agree 100 i mean i try to not have any pre pretense when i teach you know they they I mean they know the line but they also know you know i'm a, I'm a goofy ass teacher right. that's, and that's fine right but, but you um, do and unfortunately you have to be you've got you run at a much more disadvantage than i do i don't have to have any out there there's there's no authority to me they can <laughs> they can insult they can they can do whatever the hell they want they know there's no repercussions there at all except my son and even he will push it um you know you've actually got to be a teacher i just get to pretend to be one for yeah, a couple hours of, a week. A, but, but i will say we, we have no um repercussions at our school either apparently oh, really? no it, it basically um we don't have detentions we don't have suspensions we don't really um all they really have is the fact that i'm standing my i'll stand my ground and they need me to pass <laughs> that's kind of like where the, the only weapon like, in the wheels and how does it how does it sort of exhibit itself like when you have trouble with someone at school how does that exhibit itself now um, I mean, it, it, it can go into different things. Usually it's, um, with, with these kids more like squaring up, they'll try to like, you know, cause it's like, you know, like the guy, uh, ego thing, you know, um, right. you know, don't talk, you know, don't say that to me, or I, I don't need to do that. Or, what are you, why are you trying to make me do this? You, right, kinda, right. you kind of just stand your ground. You kind of try to be calm with it, but stern at the same time. Right. Um, it, it's, it's a little challenging. There's also, um, behaviors of, you know, leaving the room they're not supposed to, or, right. um, mis or abusing the tech that they do have in class. Um, oh so my think, god yeah they can probably yeah. run circles around half that stuff can't you they? know the, the funny thing is um like i said um, when i was working at the the therapeutic school we had a couple of students and we have you know we have a one tech person who's trying right. to control everything right and the, usually the window is 48 hours it works for 48 right. hours until they figure out the go around and then we start all over again yeah but it, they, they are they are so far beyond the adults in the mm. room and in the building that usually, like I said, you can cut it off for about 48 hours and then they talk to each other, god damn it. And they tell each mm -hmm. other how they did it. And they yeah. all know within uh, three or four days what happened. Yeah. It, it, it's the only benefit that you have is that because they're kids, they're, I don't say too stupid, but they're too stupid to keep their mouth shut and not brag about what they did. Right. Oh, I see. All right. And then, so they're they're right. fessing up without even meaning to. Right. They'll be like, oh, you know, like, you know they'll, you know, have some game on there that you, you, you shut off and they'll be like, yeah, well, then why am I still playing it? Oh, well, right. See, it's a, well, though, and tomorrow then does I mean, it's like right. guys keep your mouth shut you'd be a lot better at this turn That's off the volume so that'd be easier for you guys to get away with this stuff well um, and i don't even fight the dual screen because I, I there's no point to me like i feel right, like there's right. nothing i can say to them so i just feel like it it's it, to me it's like a great sign is i to me it's actually kind of i kind of like it because i can tell who's interested in what you can go okay right. so that worked for him that worked for her that you know um you know uh, yeah I'm gonna say, unfortunately, from a teacher, for me, I, I can't have if a principal walks in there playing games. Other that looks so. I gotta like, yeah, yeah. I gotta, no, I, gotta, no, I, gotta I gotta come, I gotta come down on that stuff. But yeah. usually, my, my rule of thumb usually is, I, you know, I teach my class. If you're not interested, whatever you do, fake it so I don't have to get get on you about it. You right. know, so if you're going to have do your doodle, if you're going to kind of drift off, just don't get caught. Just have the book open, make it look like you're yeah. doing it. I, I, cause I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I was a horrible student in high school. I was horrible. Oh, yeah. I was a C student. I hated school. I hated my teachers. And I the think thing C is, was like, my parents were happy when I got a C. <laughs> like, oh, like, oh thank God he passed. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I mean, so that's, I mean, I understand it's some of it can be awful and I get it. Mm. And you're not in the mood, but usually is if you're not going to just fake it so I can, so I don't have to bother you, you don't have to bother me. Long mm -hmm. you're not disrupting, just do what you got to do and I'll teach. And what you'll find is if you do it well, you teach well and, I, you know be a little theatric the mm -hmm. kids that are screwing off will look up and suddenly they'll look towards you and now you've got right. it for a few minutes and now you you got that minute you know do something yeah. with it, you know? it, it works yeah it's amazing isn't it
It is amazing. And that feeling of like, when you go like, oh my God, they're listening. Oh crap, they're listening. Uh, yes. I've got to get this right. Yeah, I, I'll, say, I'll say, um, you know, we're kind of talking about uh, one of the best moments I had as a teacher. Um, this is back at the therapeutic school. We had this one student coming in um because they would come in from other schools because you know they don't stay with us for four years but he was coming in and we had a meeting and they told me this kid hates english he will not don't ask him questions do not ask him to read right. leave him alone because you don't want to deal with the um the, the problem because he right, will right. blow up and right. i said whatever i'm i'm, I'm gonna do my job so in, in, within one week we were reading uh, beowulf he was oh, wow. he was acting out the scenes of Beowulf in front of the class as summaries at the because he bought in. He bought into the character. I was yeah. stupid. I think I bought him in as um I called him that guy. He's that guy who always has to brag about how wonderful he is about everything and would right. up everyone with they said. Like, he's that guy. So you all know that guy. He's that guy. Yeah. And he bought in, he would go do the whole thing and act at the scene, you know, but it's in summary and all that. I was like, guys, don't tell me a kid can't, you know, doesn't like English. Just you've had bad teachers. <laughs> that's it. And that's it. It's like, I, and that's my biggest issue is I also worry that, you know, I was like, how do we get beyond the fact of just, I hope you get a good teacher. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, why aren't like, why don't we know what a good teacher is? Like, why don't we know how to create that? Why don't we know how to maintain that? Why don't we know how to uh, reward that? I, you know, there I, was a time when teaching was teaching was the that was the job to have. Mm. That was like a, that was like a, you know, you meant you, it meant, you know, you knew your subject. Mm. And I feel like sometimes it's like, you know, people feel like they're failing into it or something. Like it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me. Well, like I don't understand why, you know, hey, if you don't know, you teach that kind of stuff, like that kind right. of attitude. You're like, but what if, but what if you just want to teach? You know what I mean? Like, right, right. Well, 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 I'll give you one secret about teaching from that, what I've learned over the years. And, and I think I've been better that I've learned about this is that, mm. um, there's a closed door thing about teaching. Hmm. Teachers don't like to admit to another teacher when they're not doing something well or that they don't know something. So hmm. no one talks about it. Huh. So, I mean, it, it, like um, I will say, and, and if you, you think like as an English teacher, I know all about English. Well, guess what? I don't. I know hmm. enough. I know more than they do. And I can teach and I'll screw up from time to time. I tell the students, one thing I do as I introduce myself, I have a whole thing where I go into the, the better, why it's okay to be wrong, you know, and I'm wrong right. all the time myself. But teachers don't like talking about it. they don't like talking about i don't know what i think i or i maybe i think i should know or hmm. i didn't know how to handle this class the way i think i do and you don't talk to each other yeah so because you don't talk to each other shittiness just continues because no one's willing to admit to the other to another teacher that hmm. you missed something they will, will tell you that when they're they, they need help and it, hmm. it's, it's this weird closeted thing where no one wants to talk about what's going on it's, it's i guess that's, yeah that's bizarre i mean that is also a grown-up thing too right like grown-ups yeah. want to be right Right. You know what I mean? And I, I guess that's, I guess, maybe that's just my own insecurities. I just assume I'm wrong and that's worked out pretty well for me. You know what I mean? Like I, I, that, which it sounds silly, but I really do. Like I, I, that's, I just assume I'm not going to get things right. Right. And then when it, and then it, when it works, it's, 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 it's wonderful. But I, but, but as a result, I don't get, I don't get, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, depressed when I when it doesn't because I just assume that you've got to fail a few times. Anyways, yeah. it's funny they're saying what is like what what are the most important important things for a kid to learn uh, for the like future skills, future proof skills is is what to do with failure mm. because you're going to fail. Yeah, it, and everyone's going to fail. The question is, what do you do with it? Right. No, I agree with you. Like I said, my um like. On Monday, when I start my, with the, my new school and I start with the new kids, mm. I have a PowerPoint on which says who I am. If that's what's the name of the PowerPoint, it's about me, so they understand and get comfortable with who I am. Right. And I right. literally have one whole thing where it's about being. It's okay to be wrong, and I expect you to right. be wrong. I tell them in the thing that expect me to be wrong. I will screw yeah. up. You'll see grammatical errors on the freaking assignments. And I'm right. telling you, I made them. They're typos. But right. you know what? That's just how these things go. And you can catch them, and you can tell me I screwed up. That's fine with me. Right. That's part of the, the part of the deal. And when you're wrong in your questions. You know, so feel free to be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know. You know, I, I gave yeah. you the wrong answer. That's how yeah. this goes. But is that is the is I think there's a fear. I think when you're a teacher of what you're expected to know, mm -hmm. the ego, and, and then a bit of an ego that you don't want someone to tell like your boss, your principal. Oh, did you know uh, Jeff got this answer wrong on Romeo and Juliet or whatever? You know, he didn't even it. know this. Yeah, right, right. right, I, right. I think this whole quiet thing. So everyone just kind of acts like, no, I know everything. Everything's good. I'm, I'm, I was perfect. My class is perfect. <laughs> right. Yeah, I guess that. I mean, yeah, I guess that is it. I mean, I, I and I understand that. Too. I mean, I work again, working in IT. I remember being the new kid coming in and trying stuff and everyone was always like, oh, my God, don't touch that. <laughs> and then I remember, the, you know, the, the, what, you know, one of the things that led to me going back to the fake the world of film and television was 
realizing that there's a new kid had come in and I was very nervous about what he was doing. And I was like, Oh God, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that guy who's like, oh, don't touch anything. That's the way it is. You know what right, I mean? Right, like right. it's, it's uh, you know, I mean, again, there's, there's that, you know, you're, you're operating at a disadvantage as an adult anyways, because you have, you know, you have a sense of repercussions that kids don't mm. have. Right. Yeah. So, you know, that there will, that, that one thing will lead to another. Whereas at that age, you know, the brain isn't developed enough to really make a lot of those connections anyways. So they, yep. so they can, you know, they can make those mistakes and not, and not worry about it if that makes right. sense. Cause they don't know where, where it's good, where it's going to lead them, you know? Right. And, and I agree with you hundred percent. I mean, uh, when, you know, when I start with the, these new students and uh, on Monday, yeah, there's going to be, I recognize there's going to be some, uh, we're going to lock horns a little bit for a couple of weeks, usually how it goes. And they mm. test you and they try to figure out, you know, what the problem is, but you know, at, at the end of the day, th they'll assume the line is somewhere and you'll hold, you'll hold that line and you try to not, point out that there's no repercussions for them not to listen right. to you there's literally nothing we're gonna do we're, we're not gonna hold you after we're not gonna fail you so you also appear in the upcoming television show cabin of curiosity what drew you to that project oh uh, well that was well guillermo is always a pretty good draw you know yeah you know, guillermo del toro generally you know uh he i i've been very very lucky i've worked with him a few times now and uh i uh uh you know i i just he's I sort of refer to him as like the Gandalf of Hollywood. He's this kind of magical being. He just, he just has these, he just makes you, I, I, it's funny. I came out of, I worked on Shape of Water and I remember getting the part and uh, I got the, I, I'd auditioned in, in England um, and sent the, and sent the recording in and, and ended up getting the part. And, uh, and I was like, I was like, oh, good. Okay, good. So that's good. That's, a, I mean, it's like, it's a couple of days work. It's great. You know, yeah. um, basically it was like, sort of like a check, you know what I mean? Like, oh, that'll look good on the resume type thing, <laughs> being the jaded jerk that I am. Um, and then, then they called me and said, well, they, we, you know, he wants you to come in for rehearsals. I'm like, oh, rehearsals, like, do we have to rehearse? It's film, you know, just film it. Right, um, right, right. You know, so I'm like, all right, fine. So I cycle down to the, 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 and then I'm in for a whole week of rehearsals with all of the cast. And I'm like, oh God, this is gonna be awful. I hate actors. Um, and then, uh, but I got in there and the first thing he did, oh, David, 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 he pulls, you know, wades me into his, into his office and is, you know, surrounded by zombies and vampires. It's just a beautiful, you know, like this right, right, magical right. world unto itself. And then he goes, and he goes into his desk and he shuffles around. He comes out with this little red cross. He goes, I think your character would wear this. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, I was like, you know, I'm like, I can barely see it. I'm like, I'm like, okay. Yeah, he goes, I found this in a market in Marrakesh and I was thinking this would be what he was wearing in his jacket. I'm like, or maybe it's tight. Um, and I'm like, you, I was like, I'm in for two days. Like, what do you, you've thought about this? You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but, but I sort of like sucked it up. And then I, but I sort of, so, but that, then I sort of went into the room with all these actors doing these scenes. And, and I remember we were, they were walking, they were talking through a scene and, and, and then there, and, and at one point he, you know, he, he will turn to you and sort of go like, what do you, what do you think? And you're like, what? What does it matter? I got like two lines. What do you like? What <laughs> the hell does it matter? You know, um, but he's just so, I mean, it's entire, it's always Guillermo. Yeah. There's nothing that, I mean, there's no, like anything that happens in his movies is Guillermo. There's no like, and yet at the same time, you feel like you're involved in every aspect of it. And I, That's he cool. just has this amazing ability to this to the point where I missed, uh, like when I, 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 when the rehearsals were over, I was really sad. And Jane's like, well, you still you haven't even shot it yet. I was like, yeah, but but the rehearsals are over. Like they were so much because I'd sit there for a day just listening to this guy. And every single scene in that movie, he had some story that related to his life or a moment in his life or a thought that he had about something. Everything was personal in that. Um, and it was beautiful, like just beautiful. And the people he gets to work around him, they, you know, he he has, I think, the most important trait as a director, which is people want to work with you. Mm. you know and that means that they want to do the best they possibly can and so you get the best and he's just got these amazing people who who make his films with him and um you know and then you know and then and then you know a few months later you get a little email that says darling you know uh would you do a day on this new thing and you're like okay i guess <laughs> you know okay mr germo um you know he's just won an oscar and you get like a little text saying would you do a day on the so-and-so and then and then pandemic screwed that up and, and 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 as it turned out again pandemic working in my favor i ended up getting a much nicer role in in nightmare because you know other people weren't available and he's like okay perfect david will do that so you know um you know so i got to interrogate to 
Bradley Cooper. You know, I mean, it was just it, it's just it's just magical. So the idea that Guillermo was involved in it first off is and foremost is probably, you know, but the big the big draw as well is that I told you about getting into into acting in film at age 13, 14 years old. So the kid who came up to me and asked me to do his film, the kid, he's the same age as me. Um, you know, he, he he's Vincenzo Natale. He's the guy who did Cube is the guy. Mm. So he's directing this one. So, um, and I was laughing because he he's he's written this script. I mean, I guess, I guess Guillermo had a series of stories that he wanted to do and he would send, he sent them out to a bunch of different directors, one of them being Vincenzo, because they're, they're, you know, they're, they're good friends as well. And, um, uh, and, um, you know, again, it just, just one of these lucky, fortunate things that happens to me, um, you know, they, they could have got they should have got a name for this. I mean, they should have got this many famous people. I'm sure would love to work with Guillermo and, and Vincenzo on a show, but because I know Vincenzo and and this this film is so so Vincenzo, um, uh, you know, Vincenzo said he'd like to get like to have me for it, and Guillermo's like, well, who else? You know what I mean? Like it was just you know, there's all these. I like, felt felt so bad for all these like net, Netflix executives going like, oh, we could have. Think of, we could have Bradley Cooper. We could have this. We could have this. And then, Brad, and then you know, there's Guillermo going like, "Yeah, no, no, Hewlett's perfect." Um, you know, they're all like, "Go, oh, stupid Hewlett." Um, but uh, but it's just it was it was this wonderful as always with Vincenzo. I know it's a bit like Guillermo as well. Vincenzo's the most Guillermo like director I've ever worked with, if that makes sense. So I think that's why I I think that's why I can I work for Guillermo is because because I feel like I've worked with a Guillermo for many years and that's, that's, that's Vincenzo. Mm. Um, but he's constructed this script that, as I said, I said, God, you know, if I was 15 again, this would be a wonderful script to do. The fact that I'm over 50 and you're making me do the same crap is, is <laughs> going to kill me. I still can't move my arms properly from this thing, <laughs> but it was, it was, it is just this, it is an, it is a, I, I mean, I want to say like an evil dead meets, meets oh god like meets midsomar meets i meets a guillermo movie like I, it's just it is glorious it is ridiculous and 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 over the top and touching and i just i can't i can't get over it i and it's you know and we filmed it all in black and white which will be interesting because i think they're also doing a color version as well but the, but the idea was to do a like a crazy old black and white movie and it's just it is Oh man, it's nuts. It's so much fun. It's, it's, I, I think the, the best quote we got from, for, for about it was, uh, uh, Vincenzo's wife, Kana is brilliant, um, film, uh, acquires films for Japan, for company in Japan, you know, got, uh, you know, a Blair Witch project for like 10 bucks saying, I think this is going to be big, that kind of stuff. It's like, she's a genius. Anyway, but she said, she said, she said, well, here's the thing is because actors are all masochists. They love anything. If they're miserable, they're happy. And sure enough, this film was, you know, I was, I was in tunnels. They, they lit, I had a tunnel fitting. I went and they, they had to build a tunnel that was only just big enough for me to be in. And then they made miles of these things that I, would, that I was in for, for a month. Um, you know, and then the day before we started shooting, I went, honey, am I claustrophobic? <laughs> like, I was like, I was like, it never even occurred to me that I might actually be claustrophobic. Um, I had a horrendous nightmare the night before we started. Uh, where I was panicking and buried alive and a lot of the things that happened. In this. Um, and I thought, oh God, I've screwed up. I've screwed up horribly. I'm going to get in there. I'm going to get in this tunnel and I'm going to be screwed. But the reality is it's, it's make-believe and I, mm. and it's, uh, you know, it's not necessarily comfortable, but it was, but it was, it was extraordinary. I mean, I, I can't give too much away, but it's, but it's, um, you know, it's this, it's this wonderful sort of anthology series that he's created. It's like, it's kind of a Hitchcock presents or a mm. twilight zone type thing. So it's a number of different stories. I don't believe they're connected in any way other than Guillermo. Um, and they're all just a, a chance to sort of let these directors freak flags fly. Like, I mean, they're just, they all get to do what they do best. And some of it is truly weird. Um, and they got these amazing, amazing, uh, in other things, many fantastic actors and, and directors involved. And um, I, I can't wait to see them. I mean, like, I'm excited to see mine very much, very right, much right. so. And it's a wonderful opportunity because it's like, it's just me and a lot of horror. Um, you know, and a few wonderful little, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of supporting characters, but but it's you know, it's kind of a one man's pathetic journey. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, but all these, I can't wait to see all these other episodes as well, because it's really going to be, you know, I used to remember those, uh, the old anthology series, I used to love that stuff. 
I, I mean, I understand why they don't do more of them because they're expensive yeah. and there's no draw. You know what I mean? Like, it's like every episode, you got to start all over again. Right. right, you know right. I mean? um, but so the sets are just gorgeous. I mean, just, I mean, I, somebody gives somebody an award for something or everything because it was just everything was meticulously made and the effects are just i mean the, 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 uh, guillermo and and vincenzo are big fans of uh of practical effects mm. um and i grew up with this stuff like working with vincenzo as a kid we did lots of all sorts of zombie stuff and and you know pseudo mechanical approaches to 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 stuff i mean even making cube there was this you know, Cube, I think there's one digital shot in Cube because it was the only thing that we could afford, um, yeah. you know, and it's like, it's a joke now. I mean, but, <laughs> but, but everything was, you know, practical because one of the, one of the, one of my joys about independent film, especially genre stuff, is that you're constantly working against budget and time and, um, and you're try just trying to get it to work in the camera. And it's just, I, th this was, this was, no, oh, it was spectacular. So, and now you got the digital element as well, so you can now improve on, you know, you can get as you can get as best as possible with practically, and then it's helped out by the digital. I, you know, or you know, or, or there's some pure digital stuff which is gorgeous too. But you know. well, what, what what I read about it, and it, you know, there's only so much information that's out there right now that you can your character's played is named I probably get the name wrong, Masson. 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 Yes. Yeah, and yeah. it's based on a short story by Henry Kuttner. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I don't know how to say his name, but yeah. Oh, yeah. I probably got it wrong too, but if, if it yeah. sounded real, I'm, I'm yeah. taking it. I bought it. I totally bought it. Yeah, you're a good teacher. <laughs> oh, thank you. I said it with confidence. And that's yeah, that's it. it. That's what that's it. Just say it loudly and fast. That's what I did on Stargate. Everyone thought I knew what I was talking about. It's amazing. <laughs> so, so, so did you read the short story that was based on and to prepare? Did, did you? Nope. Nope. I just read the script. I, I mean, I'm, I don't know whether I'm lazy or whether I'm superstitious or what the deal is. I just, I feel like there's some stuff you want to research for sure. Um, and we talked about an accent originally. So I was looking at accents and stuff. My problem with accents is that, I mean, I, I mean, I love, I love doing them certainly in a silly way. Um, but my concern is it's another layer between you and, and reality, if that makes mm. sense. You know what I mean? You're already trying to sell the fact that things are happening to you that aren't really happening. So having a, an accent as well. I, you know, I, I felt it was, so we, we talked about it, we decided not to do an accent, um, which I was a little disappointed about because I was like, oh, but I would have, I could have done an accent, but nah, whatever. Um, but I'm actually kind of glad I didn't because it allowed you to be, there's so much, this, it's one of those scripts that there's these, there's these gorgeous, long monologues, mm -hmm. which I'm sure they've cut out, but, but, but we filmed these gorgeous, long monologues. And then, so you're reading the script, you're like, oh my God, this is like a, actors dream all these wonderful speeches and and you know with nail and i like you know waving your arm around and he's very sort of theatrical this guy and then all of a sudden that stops and it's just pages and pages of 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 uh of a uh, um a scene direction because there's no dialogue mm -hmm. it's all just things have one after the other after the other and it's just uh it's just extraordinary. It was, I said, I said to, to Vincenzo, I think, I think it's my favorite read of his. I mean, scripts are, scripts are ugly. They're boring. They don't, you know, they're not, scripts are horrible to read because you just don't, they're not meant to be read. They're meant to be seen, right, right. you know? Um, I mean, unlike Shakespeare, you know, who've actually got some, you know, they got some good things to say in there. Um, you know, scripts are just, they're awkward. They always, and, and if you're in the, I feel like if you're in the wrong mood, a script's terrible because you're like, that's stupid. No one would say that. And it's just like, because you haven't read it in your head the right way. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Um, but this was just like, this was like poetry. It's just, it was just this spectacular kind of like, and then it just culminates. It's, yeah, it's, I, I think it's absolutely brilliant. And it's just huge. Like, it's just, like, it just, it just gets worse and worse and worse. And it's, and, and funny. And there's always a sense of humor as well that I love. I mean, I mean, Guillermo, Guillermo has this as well, but Vincenzo is very big on this kind of, he goes so big with stuff in some cases, it's almost like John Woo. It's like, it goes, it goes so big that you have to laugh. And there's a, there's a few moments there where I just found myself, you know, just inside, just howling with laughter while I'm, you know, howling in pain or, 
screaming for my soul or whatever, you know, like, so a lot of, a lot of, you know, a lot of screaming, bugging my eyes, that kind of stuff, the usual, the usual, <laughs> right, right. The usual Vincenzo Natale stuff. So, I mean, yeah, it was definitely a, it was a, a tag team of reasons why you, I had to do this. One was because Vincenzo had asked me and the other, of course, was because, um, uh, because Guillermo was involved. So, you know. Well, I'd love to interview Vincenzo. If you ever want to just give him a shout out yeah, for me as well, I'll, I would love to do I that. I can send him an email. I can send him an email for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he's, I mean, oh yeah, he's, you know. <laughs> Uh, he's funny because he's such a he does all these science fiction movies and then I, I all I, the only thing I can get him to use is an iPad. He's like um, <laughs> he's like he's like a technophobe uh, sci-fi guy. Like it's it's hilarious. Um, yeah, no, he's he's a, a he's really one of the most brilliant. I I, I you know I, I'm so glad that he's made the jump to television because people can see more of what he's up to and it's mm. and it really is extraordinary. He's just got this wonderful brain. He's just done a he's just written a. Um, a graphic novel as well not just written, really he's written it and done all the art for it really and and then done all the inking and coloring himself i mean it's just he wrote an album like i i'm like i i was like if i didn't like you so much i freaking hate you <laughs> you know um well, what's the name of the graphic novel uh i can't remember i don't remember the name of it i don't remember um uh i don't even know where to find it he sent it to me on an email. Well, I'll have to, I'll, I can look it up for you. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's, uh, he's amazing. Just amazing, amazing guy. Um, uh, you know, and again, as I say, like we, we worked together as him and Andre, two, the two friends from, from high school, uh, well, middle school, even we hadn't even got to high school yet. And we would just spend our summers making movies. And it's just so funny. You know, we kept on sort of like, we'd stand beside each other at, at a, at these, you know, beside a, you know, a, five six monitors going and giant sets and people running around panicking and <laughs> making this thing happen and we just sort of look at each other and go like dude it's like being 15 again except it's like this is like grown-ups here <laughs> you know what i mean like it was just you know it's it's just so funny being the old guys at the at the party now you know mm. so, so it's when, wonderful absolutely wonderful so when is cabinet of curiosity is going to be available to and where do you know where it's going to be I think that well, it's Netflix for sure. Netflix, Netflix are and thank I, God bless Netflix. My, I mean, like, well, just that they've got they brought in Guillermo, and they're like they're letting Guillermo do what Guillermo does, which is just weird stuff. No one wants to see Guillermo doing, you know, like Pair traditional stuff. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't want to. You no, know, he's like he's doing what he does, and and you know, again, a great example of what a freaking the Gandalf of Hollywood he is. He's brought together. Instead of just saying, I want to do all the episodes myself and I'll, you know, he brings in all these different talents. He's got no, he just loves this stuff. He loves mm. filmmakers. He loves he's actors even, which is weird. Um, you know, he just, uh, he's just, he's brought together this crazy talented bunch of people and Netflix has let him do it. And I mm. think that's, you know, um, it's one of the reasons why I love them. I mean, I, that and like, I mean, you see Roma and that kind of stuff that they've done, like they let filmmakers do their thing and i i so miss that it allows them to do it allows people to make a film with their own personality instead of it mm. having to be just this freaking film by committee which yeah. i just i'm so sick of now i mean i you know i grew up i i loved all the the i love all the all the big blockbuster films but i i feel like now i i just I find it hard to connect with them anymore because I feel like they've got to appeal to everybody. Mm. Um, you know, and you got to know, so, you got to have watched five TV shows to understand what the movie's about. And I, you know, I feel like an old man now. I'm like, you know, <laughs> um, but, but uh, I mean, there is some spectacular stuff out there. We've really enjoyed Moon Knight recently, actually, Baz mm. and I were watching Moon Knight. But now we're watching Breaking Bad again. Oh, really? So me and my 14 year old kid, you know, sitting there watching cooking meth and stuff. Um, <laughs> but but again, that well, that's some brilliant television. Right? Again, a singular vision. Right. 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 Like that's that's a, that, you know, the, the, the creator of that show was just saw it through the whole way. And, and, and there was a network that was willing to su to support that. And I think that's the kind of stuff I love seeing coming from Apple's doing a great job of it now. You know what I mean? Like you're just seeing stuff that you're like, what the hell? Right. Like who the hell else would make this? You know what I mean? Like C is like, what the, you want to do an action show about blind people? Like what? <laughs> what you, nah, that's going to be great. Good luck with that one. You know what I mean? And it is, I mean, it's like, it is a lot. It is a, and, then, and then by the time you get to season three, it's like a freaking giant. It's like a, it's, it's like a blockbuster. Mm. I mean, there is more going on in season three than, than all the 
freaking Avengers movies put together. I couldn't get over it. I was like, what are we blowing up now? It's, like, it's, <laughs> it's amazing. Or who? You know what I mean? Like, well, it's, yeah. I mean, streaming is where it's at right now. I mean, like right now, at least I watched the Orville, which is so smart. Yeah, Strange I've New gone World back and started amazing. watching it. Which one? <laughs> Strange New Worlds on Star Trek. Oh, is it the new, new Star Trek? Trek? I yeah. haven't done it yet. I haven't oh, done it yet. Yeah. It's insanely good. It's what it's it's so well done. It works on huh. multiple levels. It's um pretty ballsy. Like the last episode they had, I'm um, not today's episode, which I haven't seen yet, the mm. last week's. It was it was a riff on um Alien and oh. um, the Alien movie, but with Star Trek, it's it's crazy. They're doing they're so smart. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I mean, I gotta say, I like weirdly, I don't know if I'm alone on this. I, I really <laughs> quite like Discovery. Like I was I did, I, yes. I kind of enjoyed this operatic of stuff at the beginning with the with the um uh with the hannibal guy um and then and then i i i did sort of lose touch with with it i this is my problem is i like i love star trek when it's on but now we're in a world where it's like you can pick what you want i'm i'm the best i think the best science fiction that i've seen that's on television right now is rick and morty (laughs) that's really smart though too i cannot get over how smart that is and how stupid it is right like it's just a ridiculous combination of like this this like just childish, you know, you know, uh, scatological teenage humor. Yeah. What wrapped in a in a brilliant sci-fi, you know, ec, you know, experiment. I mean, yeah. I just I can't get over it. it, it I think what I what I, what's great about Rick and Morty is that, in under the layer of stupidity, mm. there's this deep philosophical meaning underneath oh. it that's right there, and you're like, how the hell do they fit that? level of thought into this stupid concept and it's why there. and <laughs> why like why would you there's so many sort of quote-unquote better ways of expressing this story like what is it the uh, i can't remember what the one was where there was like an engine within an engine with a world within a world within a world oh yeah 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 you know he loves playing with those paradoxes like there was another one recently we saw where they were you know they were decoys they were all decoys yeah. the family I, again he loves Going like, let's see where we can go with this idea. Well, there's the one on the that got me because as the English teacher on the train where they're mm. they're doing story development, but it's all done on this like moving train. I was like, if it wasn't so vulgar, I could teach yeah. it to my students. But unfortunately, it's, they go too far over. I can't teach it to my kids because it's, it's obviously would be I'd be in trouble for showing it. Which but it sucks because that's right. exact. I mean, Shakespeare was that. Right. Shakespeare was that vulgar. Which is at how the time. Which, which is how I teach Romeo and Juliet. And there's right. the season okay. there. That, you know, when they there's a few scenes in there where I, I tell the students, I can't tell you what it's saying, but trust me, think about it. Right. <laughs> and it works. Do you do the Baz Luhrmann film as well? Have you, have you, have um, you shown do, them that at all? We do Baz Luhrmann. Um, like I said, but there's like things like, um, I, I actually would assume um, not too long ago, there's there's thing like where they um, the bite their thumb. Which do you is, bite your thumb? So. Right. But what it represents. Right. Yeah. But what, why it's so vulgar is what it's supposed to represent. And the kids don't pick up, but I'll be like, Think about it. Thumb in your mouth like that. Just think about it for a second. And, and then and they'll, they'll see the eyes start you know, getting big. Like, oh shit, that's a lot in, a, in your story that you're teaching me. It's like, as long as I don't tell you what it literally means, I can teach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Suck my thumb, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah, it's that. Right. No, it's. A, I mean, again, and it was body. I mean, it was like that's the stuff I couldn't. There was an amazing uh, series that I watched when I was, God, uh, I guess when I was just starting out. I mean, back when I was again probably 14, 15 years old was the Royal Shakespeare Company acting Shakespeare. Yeah. Um, which was, it was, it's it's ev- like all these old school British actors do it like John, David Suchet and, um, um, oh God. Uh, oh my God, this is ridiculous. Every single person in Lord of the Rings. Um, and, uh, oh, and also um, uh, uh, Picard. Um, oh, uh, Patrick, uh, Patrick Stewart. Pat- Patrick Stewart as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. All doing Shakespeare stuff. And they're, and it's this, I don't know who the guy was, but he was a, I guess he was the head of the Royal Shakespeare Company. It's, a, it's worth having a look. I think it's probably only available on VHS now or something, but but um, it was the Royal Shakespeare Company. It was called Playing Shakespeare. And it has like Dame Judy, J- J- uh, Dame Judy Dench. Um, uh, yeah, just a whole, like I, I, I will have, I have forgotten more people than there. I mean, it, it's extraordinary. The talent that, that was, that was there doing this at the time. And they just sort of stand around and say like, well, what about this? Like, what if you, you know, and they would do these different speeches. And I remember for me, it just came alive. I was like, Oh my God, this is like, have you ever, have you ever watched Shakespeare uncovered? No. Okay. It, it started off as a PBS, um, uh, mini series, uh. but it's gone, gone for three seasons. What it does, what they have is Almost every Shakespearean, well, not everyone, because there's so many, but a lot of the Shakespearean mm. plays, they had um, uh, usually a, a well-known actor 
narrating um, about the play and how it was created. There's one huh. from Macbeth that's narrated by Ethan Hawke. So huh. good. It, I, I show really? it every time I teach Macbeth. It's a genius, genius um, program. And it goes really like in depth about it. They talk about the acting of it, the writing of it. Well, they got it's, David Tennant on it as well. Yeah, David Tennant does Sweet. one. Um, Tom the guy, Hiddleston. Uh, Brian Cox, I think, has one as well. Oh, Brian Cox. I love yeah. it. I've been watching um, Succession. I have not seen such a oh, 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 dude. Oh, that is a gift. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll check it. Yeah, it's, oh, but, it's spectacular. But yeah. trust me, Shakespeare Uncovered is one okay. of the best looks at Shakespeare. And like I say, I show the Macbeth one all the time. Roman and Juliet show sometimes as well, mm. but it's so well done. Oh, that's great. Okay, I will, uh, I will definitely look that up. Uh, it's been a while since I've looked at, brushed up on some Shakespeare. You know? <laughs> and we used to have to, one of the things I miss. I tried to, I started to do this and I, I'm afraid I let it go, but I, I wanted to start a website for monologues oh, where people cool. just recorded monologues. That was it. So there's no distractions, none of this TikTok and, and, right, and right, Instagram right. stuff. The idea was that you, you only, you could write monologues and you could perform monologues. That was all it was for. That's and cool. the idea was that when I started out as an actor, that was the only way you could audition, right? There wasn't tape. Right, so right, you'd, right. you'd go into a room, you'd have a, speech prepared and you'd go and you do the speech and and i loved it absolutely loved it because you could find the most beautiful perfect piece of you know writing that mm. you that spoke to you you could and then you'd go in and you just knew your stuff like it was just like you just knew it backwards it would like i remember like there were there were monologues they just you could you know i could say it in my sleep um because you use them so many times in these auditions and now of course it's all it's all, um, um, you know, you, you just you get the sides from the show or whatever, um, which I also love too. And I still, to this day, still memorize all my lines. I can't, <laughs> even if it's just, they need it the next day, I, st I will still learn the lines because I, I don't know any other way of doing it. I mean, some mm. people can do it with the taping up the lines. I just, I've never been able to do it. But yeah, the monologues thing was just something that I miss. I miss so much. Because um, as I say, I don't like being an actor, but the acting I love doing. Mm -hmm. And I always felt with the monologues, you really got to say, it was like, okay, acting on now, there you go, <laughs> you know? And I thought it'd be kind of fun to sort of try to reinvent that for people because there's, you know, there's just, or, or just to do scenes that, you know, do a part that you're never going to get. Like, that's the other thing about the monologues is you could do a monologue for a role that you were never going to play, but it didn't matter. It was just to get them to have a sense of you and your, your mannerisms and the things you could come up with and stuff. So, well, if you ever did that, you never, you have one viewer who definitely will check it out. Well, sorry, oh, really? that, oh, good. That awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I was going to call it was, it was soliloquio and it was going to be, awesome. yeah. And it was just going to just, and I, and I actually had people, I, it was funny because you weren't the only one who liked it. Cause there was a, I think I had a few hundred people submit monologues, but I just couldn't the time, Right, right. The time and the money it was going to take to put it together, I just didn't have the, I just, I just couldn't do it, especially during the pandemic. I was like, I think I better save my money just in case we can't eat next month. So, you know, there was that, you know, um, but uh, uh, oh, no, I'm getting, now I'm getting a little messages. It's after six, so I should probably uh, wrap up. No, no worries. Wrap up. <laughs> uh, well, Mr. Hewlett, it's, it's a total pleasure talking with you. This is fantastic. David, please. Yeah, yeah, David yeah. it was one of, one of my best um, times I've had. So I'm, Oh, I'm good. Well, so that's just fantastic. I love geeking out about this stuff and you're obviously a, a kindred spirit on this stuff. So yes, that's, indeed. Uh, and on the educational stuff as well. It's even better. So <laughs> we'll right. have to stay in touch. So, um, yes. But what am I going to get you? I'm going to get you, uh, I'm going to try to put you in touch with Vincenzo. No yeah. promises because he's a busy man. Um, um, but I will definitely get you uh, uh, Jane and Kate for sure. Indeed. Um, and Kate's fun to talk to you too as well because she's got, uh, you know, she's got the whole Stargate side of stuff as well. So, and uh, she um, will tell you the opposite of every story that I've told you, basically. <laughs> I mean, fantastic. And like I said, and hopefully come back in August, talk about uh, uh, C. Talk about C. Yeah, fantastic. Indeed. Oh, have you, talk, have you talked to Jonathan Tropper? No, I have not. Tropper is the showrunner. And right. he's, he's a geek like us. All right. So he, you never know. You might actually get him to, you might get him to make it him to talk. I'll, I'll, I'll bug him as well. All right. I, I would greatly uh, appreciate that. And he's like fun. Said, Cause he did Adam project as well. He's doing the new, um, well, he's doing everything. I can't keep track. I was like, shut up. You got too, many, <laughs> you got too much work, you know? Well, like yeah. That. Well, my, is his Lego as organized as mine is probably not. <laughs> well, uh, I just will say, um, I'm probably going to release this in two parts. The first part will be Monday. So keep an eye out Great. for Monday. And then Fantastic. the second one will be Tuesday. And like I said, this came out better than I expected. Oh, I'm <laughs> so glad. So well, thank you so uh, much. Do it again. That's fine. Fantastic. And remind me, just keep bugging me. I'm terrible. So just, you've got my email now, right? You, right. We're, yeah. So just, so if you need me to tweet something or something, just remind me because I am, 
a little ADHD squirrel, you know, like I'm, yeah. you'll definitely hear from me. I guarantee it. I, I do not want to miss out to, to you as well. Thank Fantastic. you so much, sir. All right, man. <laughs> and enjoy your first day. Oh, thank you so much. I, I will. I'm, I'm, op, I'm optimistic. Culturally optimistic. Knock them dead. <laughs> thank do you, you get so nervous? Much. Do you get nervous I, before you do? I, I get nervous at every class. I, I'm, yeah. I actually have a wicked bad anxiety disorder. Oh, really? um so before every class I, it's almost like preparing for like a, a, a sport game i get very yeah. i get anxious i'll get anxiety um sometimes i'll get panic attacks that kids don't know about they never see it but yeah i get it uh almost, i get frequently but usually when the class the kids sit down i snap in and i just kind of go for it yeah but the nice thing is when you're Dude, in, that's acting same for right. acting for I'm me telling you, exactly the, thing, the same the thing about um anxiety though nervous energy works sometimes in front of a class if you, you know? can harness it yeah <laughs> right. if you can that's the problem is I just, I'm always a little nervous about it because you think like if it goes the wrong way, but it, you know, I think the more you, the more you do that stuff, I, I, people always ask me if I'm nervous, I'm nervous before every single take. Yeah. It's not, I'm, I'm a mess, but not a mess, but inside I'm like, right. oh, well, this is where they find out I suck at this. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you just, it's uh but I think what you're doing is fantastic. I mean, you gotta, oh, be, you gotta be feeling good about it. I mean, that's, you know, I, and you've got this as well. So that's, that's I want to say it's, it's, it's nice. It, it, it's nice thing about this. It makes me feel look cooler when I go there as well. Cause they're like, that's right. You know, cause like, Oh, uh, I'm going to bring in so-and-so to talk with the school. And they're like, who? And the cool thing is when we watched, uh, like we watched the movie conspiracy, which was based on the, on, oh. on the Nazi um, final solution. Oh yeah, so yeah. I was able to get one of the actors a Barnaby K was, I got him to come to talk to class. So we watched the movie, then the actor comes talking about it. And um, when we did Macbeth, Miles Anderson, um, the Shakespearean actor who was in yeah, Macbeth yeah. with Denzel Washington, he came and talked to the kids. So it's like, we're going to oh, watch the movie cool. and then we're going to talk to the, to the actor and it makes me look bad. <laughs> and now if you get some YouTubers in there, you'll really have their attention. I, I know. Now I have to yeah. be like, oh, we'll talk to, we'll find a YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck. Good luck. You know, swing a cat, you'll hit like 10 of them. You know what? Because YouTubers, so I, I, YouTubers everywhere. Yeah, there's a few. There's actually a few that um, I try reaching out to. Um, I can't remember. Um, but I must admit, they're almost they're harder to get in touch with than the acting actors. So really, they, they, they reach at the point where um, they're harder to get yeses from to talk to mm. than the um, than actors. I think because they do YouTube too, they're like competitors. Like there's there's also know. yeah, and I think honestly, I can only imagine how much email they're getting. I mean, oh. I can't. I have enough hard time. I have enough hard time getting through my email. I can only imagine what someone who's actually got who's like internet famous. I mean, like Jesus, right, right. that's got to be. And also, they don't have people. Like that's the great True. thing about I got I got my agent who's luckily who's also a, a, a big geek as well. I think he's my agent because he has better Lego than I do. That's, <laughs> that's I think awesome. that's what that's the sign of a good agent. All right, I gotta go. Um, All right, have a great night, sir. Thank you so much, man. It was uh, good luck with it. And, uh, yeah. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up.